Alrighty. I, I, I had to be outside for this. And I need to get this off my chest. So, um, I'm currently taking a film class in, uh, uh, in my college. And we just got finished watching, um, Shawshank Redemption. Uh, and oh my god. Holy that movie is fantastic. The last time that I was this, like, excited and felt, the last time I felt this much emotion from a film was Inside Out five years ago, back in 2015. Oh my god. Okay, hang on a second. Okay, so, first off, spoilers. If you haven't watched Shawshank Redemption, go freaking watch it. It's an amazing film. Give you the, uh, the condensed edition. This video is going to be similar to, uh, a series of videos that I made on the uh, original Sailor Moon series where I'm going to talk to the camera for 10, 15, 20 minutes. Very minimal editing to take out the unnecessary ums and uhs and pauses and etc. This, this movie was incredible. I'm, I'm going to make a playlist of movie reviews and TV reviews because oh my god. Boggles my mind how there isn't content like this. I mean, yeah, Doug Walker does some stuff occasionally talking about this where he sits in front of a camera and yeah, but it's not on a personal level. He's more or less just telling you about what he saw and not giving you, you know, an experience, not giving you really any emotion on it. And that's what I want to do with this video. So... Uh, I'm not going to go into into the actors or anything like that. I, I, I want to dive straight, straight into it. Spoilers. So, there's this man named uh, Andy DeBain, I think, or Andy DeCane, I'm not sure. Uh, he is a, uh, a con artist, a bank teller who specializes in cons. Very intelligent man. Basically, picture... Al Capone, sort of like the attitude of Al Capone, but with the intelligence of, like, an Albert Einstein or a Stephen Hawking. That's basically Andy DeCane, or DeBain, I, I know his first name's Andy. So, basically, he ends up going to prison because he allegedly, allegedly killed his wife and this other dude that his wife was sleeping with. Now, this is alleged. In the famous words of, of Josh Pallone, I'm not saying that any of this is true. I'm not saying that FBI, you know, effed up. This is all alleged. Thank you, Josh. Uh, I love your content, brother. Oh, my God. <laughs> I haven't felt this much emotion since Inside Out of 2015. That's how excited I am over this, man. Andy ends up uh, getting... Uh, two life sentences, which is uh, 60 years. Uh, one life sentence, one maximum life sentence in the state of Maine is 30 years, so two is 60 years. He gets sentenced to 60 years in uh, Shawshank uh, State Penitentiary, hence the name Shawshank Redemption. And you'll see the redemption part here in a second. So Andy, on his... For God's sakes, man, I, I just want to record this video. My parents keep interrupting me every two minutes. Over the span of a uh, couple months, he ends up befriending this African-American fellow named Red. And the two of them become very, very, very close friends. To give you the picture of Shawshank State Penitentiary, it's not very uh, pretty. The guards constantly abuse the... Um, the uh, inmates stuff hits the fan it, it it it's horrible uh and on andy's first night a uh somewhat obese fellow ends up getting murdered by the uh head guard of the prison so andy gets the broad idea if i can get on these guards good side they won't do what they did to that guy to me Two years go by, and there's some voluntary work that needs to be done on a license plate uh, factory roof. They need to tile the, the roof. 
Andy, as well as Red and a couple of his buddies, end up volunteering. They overhear the head guard talking about, you know, oh, you know, what, you know, my, my freaking brother-in-law died and left my sister one million dollars and and I got thirty five grand but it's gonna be right off to IRS so I won't see a penny of it. So Andy goes uh sir are are, are you like is your wife a good person? And at first the guy's like, What do you mean my wife's a good person? and starts, you know, because he's a corrupt prison guard. But over time, uh, and by over time I mean the span of about ten minutes, he tells this the Andy tells this guard, "Hey, if you love your wife and give her the money and you trust her with that money, it, it, it's it's tax free write off because IRS allows a, a transfer of monet, uh, monetization up to I think it I think it was like fifty grand or something." Or a hundred grand. So that that and, and in return for giving this guard the information and planning to help him write off his taxes, he asks for his buddies, his co-workers, his fellow prison inmates. You know, I I want each of them to get three bottles of of beer, the the best beer in the state of Maine, and and, and ends up getting the beer, and. At that point, Andy sort of cements himself as, hey, this, this guy's cool, you know, and, and be, sort of becomes friends with everyone in the prison. What's next? What's next? Uh, Andy uh, ends up becoming friends with Red and, and gives him all sorts of stuff. He ends up getting him on, on a harmonica. He gets him, uh, you know, with some, some, some chess pieces so they can play chess together. And in, in, in return for... This stuff. Red gives Andy uh, a, a a little pickaxe, a rock, a, a, a rock shovel pickaxe, and some posters. If, if you've seen prison breakouts, you know where this is going. But that's in that's in the future. Andy says, "Well, I've you know not now I've submitted myself as the tax man." He starts doing taxes for everyone in the prison who isn't an inmate. So the warden gets whiff of this and says, "Hey, Andy, uh, I bet you hate working in the uh, laundry firm of the prison. Why don't we put you in something that's more of your intelligence?" So he ends up becoming an, a, li a librarian, uh, an assistant to this guy named Brooks, who unfortunately gets out and kills himself because he can't adjust to outside life. So, uh, and he hangs himself in a halfway house before, uh, after writing, uh, Brooks was here above where he hung himself. There's so much to unpack. Uh, so Red says, you know, hey, we don't have a lot of books here or a lot of room for storage of books. What if we build a library? And the warden's like, and then the, the, the state senate wouldn't allow it, county clerks, all that stuff. Uh, so... And he starts writing to Congress. Well, if the state Senate doesn't, what about the federal Senate? You know, the national Senate. So he starts writing letters to Congress saying, hey, we want a fund so that we can build a library in this prison and, and get these boys educated so they can get their GEDs and their high school diplomas. And from there, he starts buttering up to the warden. So about, half, about halfway into the film, Red basically asks Andy, like, you know, wh why are you doing this? And Andy sort of, you know, brings him aside and, and, and says, I'm, 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 I'm doing this because I know that one day I'm going to get out of here. I don't know when it's going to, when I'm going to be out of here, but I know I'm going to be out of here because it's only 60 years. Uh, so anyway, this young guy comes in, a new, a new guy, and the, befriends Andy and tells Andy, like, hey, you know, going back to the whole everything I say is alleged, this guy claims to have killed Andy's wife and this other guy. As a result, this guy gets shot 
in the back by the by uh, the captain for, for for confessing to someone else's murder, I guess. I don't know. But, um, oh my, oh, dude, so, so much to unpack. Let's see here. So, so Andy didn't commit the murder. He was framed. So, he tells Red, you know, I, I've created this facade. I've created this person. Because Red thinks, you know, well, all of this stuff that you're doing has to be to the IRS or whatever. Your IRS is going to get a whiff of this. And, and he says, yeah. And it's going to go into this fictitious person's uh, account that doesn't exist. He's a figment of my imagination. He has a high school diploma, a GED, a driver's license, birth certificate, social security number. But he's not a real person. He doesn't exist. He, he's in my mind. Uh, and, and Red's like, damn, son, you are good. Uh, so eventually... He um he ends up spending I think two months in the in the shoe in solitaries they call it the shoe there, and uh, he comes out and he basically tells Red I'm gonna go to Mexico. When when you get out, I want you to go to to this guy or to this uh, field in Buckster, Maine, and and, and there's a oak tree. And a, and a stone wall, and on in the stone wall, there's a vol, a piece of volcanic rock, and under that volcanic rock, I have something for you. And Red's like, "What? What? What is it?" So that's for you to find out when you get out of here. Red, uh, the the entire time that you know people, you know the whole uh, you know rehabilitation thing. It's like, have you been rehabilitated and all, all that bullshit and. You know, convicts have to lie and say, oh, yes, sir, yes, I have been rehabilitated. But for once, after, like, this guy had been serving, like, 40 or 50 years in, in, in prison, Red finally gives the, 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 the God-honest truth. He says, you know, I, I wish I could have talked sense into that young boy. If, if, if by rehabilitated you mean changed, I'm going to be honest, I... I, I I've done more than changed. I'm a completely different person. Something that you don't understand because you haven't lived behind these bars for 50 years. You know, babe, quit wasting my goddamn time if you're just gonna unapprove me. Or, you know, you know, de deny me of my rehabilitation. And so, of course, they don't deny him of his rehabilitation. He gets out after like 50 or 60 years. So, that's how Red gets out. How Andy got out, because he was doing all these favors, he got, you know, all these trinkets and, the, and the, these presents from the other inmates, you know, posters. And like I said, if you've seen prison breakout stuff, you know that posters are kind of important for breakouts. He gets the, the, the little thing, the pickaxe. It was the pickaxe that, um, Red gave him, and he sort of gets behind the poster, and, and he starts, you know, he starts chipping away at the wall, you know, because he's a geologist, and he knows what the wall is made out of, rock-wise, because all geology is, is the study of pressure times time, and so he knows how much force he has to use in order to break the wall, so he ends up digging through the wall, he ends up um, climbing down three stories of, of granite to get to a sewer pipe, and it's raining and it's thundering and 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 and, and all that. And he break uh, as the thunder strikes, he breaks open the sewage drain, the sewage pipe, to crawl in this water and crawl 500 feet out of the drainage system. So, so, so keep in mind, this is after lockdown, so he's counted for. And this is the 1960s at this point, so no one has really es prison escaped using a poster before. So they're, what could he have done, you know? So they, they don't start looking for him until midday the next day, and by then he's long gone. He's out of the freaking county. You know, he, 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 he's in another county or whatever. 
So, uh, yeah, he long gone. He gets out of the drain into this river uh, because he's friends with the warden. The warden handed him his clothes. So, he stole his warden's clothes and kept them as civilian clothes. He went into commissary and, and got all the stuff he needed. Toothbrush, toothpaste, so, a bar of soap, you know, pens, pencils, paper, etc. You know, so, some, some money that, that he stole from the warden. He bathes himself in the river. And another reason why he runs in the river is to get rid of his scent so bloodhounds and canines can't track him. So he's running through the river, he bathes himself, he puts on his civilian clothes, and he heads to Mexico. And that's how he gets away. Now, 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 now going back to that fictitious person, that, that man of, of imagination, he has a driver's license, he has a birth certificate, all that stuff. He ends up take Andy takes on this fictitious persona and goes into the bank and says, you know, hey, I've been doing business here secretly during the night, so you probably don't know who I am. I would like to stop doing business with you because I want to move to Mexico. So, uh, he moves to Mexico, he meets Red, and the two of them start a business down there in Mexico as, as free men. Oh, well, Andy isn't, isn't free, he broke out. He broke out as Andy. But he was freed as this other person, so no one can track him. You know, and also, we as the viewer know he's innocent because some other guy killed his wife and his, uh, or, and her lover. Not, not, not Andy. So we, the viewer, know that he's innocent in this. And he had to serve, you know, 40 or 50 years. Just like, you know, uh, I'm, I'm drawing striking parallels to Josh Pallalt having to serve you know, six years because his uh, ex-girlfriend didn't want to testify that she was in possession of uh, male child porn. Mm -mm. Um, 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 Amer the American justice system is fucked. But that's how it be sometimes. So, um, so the guy who basically told the warden, you know, this is what actually happened, ended up getting killed. So Andy framed the warden and the, uh, the, uh, the, he framed the warden for tax fraud, because how the heck are we getting money for libraries and, and all this stuff? It's not Andy, even though it is, but he frames it up against the warden. So the warden is under, has a warrant for the, for his arrest. He ends up shooting himself. And the captain, who's supposed to be this, I'm, I'm the captain, ends up crying like a baby because he gets arrested for the murder of this innocent inmate. Is you just shot and killed some random dude? Oh, well, he was trying to escape. Is that's not what our evidence says? Our evidence says the warden met him outside of the gate and you shot and killed him and tried to pass it off as he was trying to escape when in reality he was just talking to the warden by the gate and you shot him because you thought he was escaping so w with that red and andy end up living the rest of their lives as free men starting a hotel business in mexico and uh and doing part-time works on like repairing boats and ships and stuff oh, oh my god dude the, the, this movie, if the, the least that I can say is, uh, if you haven't seen this movie, you need to go watch it. And I know I spoiled the whole thing, but there's stuff in there, man. There, there's a lot of stuff in there uh, that my, my film class finally showed me a, a good, a actual, honest to God good movie, the acting, the cinematography, the music, the score, the arrangement, how everything played out in the film, how you thought it was one thing, but it was actually another, just, oh my god, so, um, with that, I give this movie an e easy, easy, a heavy 10 out of 10, 
a heavy 10 out of 10. So uh, with that, this video was very long, but I don't care. I don't care if no one watches this or whatever. I don't really care because um, I thoroughly enjoyed this movie. With that, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, Twitter, Instagram links will be in the description. And uh, oh my, oh my God, dude! Oh my good lord! I, I, I don't know what else to say. I'm, I'm, I'm speechless, man. This, 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 this movie had me feel things that I haven't felt in a long time, and, and I'm, I'm really happy for that. So, um, anyway, uh, I'll uh, talk to you guys later. This is going to be a really, really long video. But uh, I don't care. Talk to you guys later. Bye.